The offence was committed in Prairie de Luce. That's a simple fact. So you don't start an investigation in uh, Morocco or Spain or even Lisbon. This offence happened in Prairie de Luce. It's a very self-contained resort, and that's where I think the answer is. Dave Edgar is leading the search for Madeleine McCann. Today, he's in Praia de Luz on the Portuguese Algarve to oversee filming of significant events described in witness statements. Statements which he believes strongly suggest that someone was watching the McCann family. He hopes that the reconstructions will lead to discovering who that someone is. We may have been watching the apartment for a week or more. I, I don't think it was someone random. In my experience, uh, random just doesn't happen. Someone just doesn't go in, pass her by and, and pick up a child and take it. These things are planned. Okay. This, this um, scene, you're, you're standing over there now, okay? Okay, and you're standing at an angle. This angle. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Action. Witness number one is a British tourist. She first saw something strange four days before Madeline disappeared. I was walking along the road with my daughter when I saw a man. I grabbed my daughter's hand and pulled her towards me because for some reason he unnerved me. Would that be good for you? Yeah. She saw the same man again this time close to the McCann's apartment on the day before Madeline went missing. The next time I saw him, he was standing on the opposite side of the road to the apartment. He appeared to be watching it. He was about five foot ten, slim build and wearing casual clothes. Jeans, I think. I would describe him as very ugly, pitted skin with a large nose. And as you're just passing here, this chap will be stood over there. So if you just, when you come up, if you just glance over at him and... The second witness is a schoolgirl who lives near the holiday complex. Three days before Madeline was taken, she was with her mum outside the McCann's apartment. I was walking to the school bus stop. I go this way to school every day. As I was walking down the road near the apartments, I saw a man on the small path behind the block. My grandparents used to live in that apartment, so I always look at it as I pass by. The man seemed to be looking at the balcony of the ground floor apartment. He was wearing a black jacket and leaning against the wall. She saw him again as well, the day before Madeline was taken. I didn't go to school that day because I had an ear infection. I was walking up the road with my two dogs when I saw the man. He was standing on the road opposite the Ocean Club and he was staring at the apartment. You have been coming from, from your apartment, which is over here somewhere. You, you turn the corner and walk down the footpath. Well, the two of us. Yeah, the two yeah, of you together. Yeah. Okay, this, this is actually a sketch that was, yeah. that was drawn by the witness at the time. And uh, as you can see, he's, and just, he's just yeah, stood he's just where we are. Yeah. No, and make, make eye contact with him and then just walk straight on past. Thank you. Witness number three is a man with his partner from Cheshire. He gave a statement to the police describing a man he'd seen near the apartment. I can't remember whether I saw the man on Wednesday the 2nd or Thursday the 3rd of May, but as we walked along the road, I saw a man standing next to the wall by the parking area. On the opposite side of the road was a white van. I pay particular attention to him because he appeared to be focused on watching the apartment block. As I walked past him, I looked at him and for a split second we had eye contact. But then he just carried on staring at the apartment. We're asking for people to come forward with information. For me, one of the big things is in any sort of major crime, the perpetrators always confide in someone else. They've got to get it off their chest. And it's that person as much as anything that we're aiming at 
that someone knows something. Jerry is back in Pride de Luge. His arrival and the reconstructions are attracting a lot of media attention. But for the people who live here, it's attention they can do without. This is an area that relies strongly on tourism and people's livelihoods are being affected. And I can totally understand when people are suffering economically and that they get resentful. But I hope they can understand as well that as parents, we need to find mad living. The simmering anger is evident. A brand new billboard poster of Madeline with Help Me in Portuguese has been splattered with paint. And at the holiday complex, Jerry can hear the hostility. No one, you know, even with a heart of stone, can take away that there's a little girl missing. Why anyone would not want to help find her? It's a mystery, and obviously, if we find Madeline, then everyone can move on. He goes back to the tapas bar, where they ate in the evenings while the children slept in the apartment. I can't remember exactly the, where the table was. It's kind of in this bit. So it'd be about round here. And uh, I was kind of sitting in this bit, and Kate was here. Well, you can see where the shutters are now, and um, the the bit of the hedge, it's growing, it was cut, you know, a couple of feet lower than that. For the first time in two years, Jerry returns to apartment 5A of the Ocean Club. The last place where he saw his daughter, Madeline, asleep in her bed. <laughs> And so I actually came in and Madeline was just at the top of the bed here where I'd left her lying and the covers were folded down and she had her cuddle cat and blankie were just by her head and it's terrible because I, um, I had one of those really proud father moments where I just thought, you know, she, I just thought you're absolutely beautiful and I love you. And I just paused for a minute and, and then I just pulled the door, closed again, and just to about there. And uh, I felt incredibly proud standing there and having, you know, three beautiful children. Well, that's the, I think, the, the most ironic thing of the lot, that that momentary pause I had at that door, that's exactly what I felt like. You know, a few minutes before our world was essentially shattered and probably three or four minutes before Madeline was taken. And we obviously absolutely... Uh, what's the word? Persecuted ourselves for not being here. And, um, and there is no doubt that not being here at that moment um, increase the risk of it. The McCanns were on holiday with a group of friends. In the evenings, they all ate together and took it in turns to make half-hourly checks on each other's children. Two of the group, Matthew Oldfield and Jane Tanner, both crucial witnesses, have returned to help Dave Edgar with the reconstructions. It's believed that Madeline was taken shortly after her father's check at nine o'clock. In the 45 minutes that followed, there were two significant sightings of a man carrying a young girl. The first was by Jane Tanner. She was looking in on her sick daughter when she saw Jerry returning from his check. He was talking to a friend, Jez Wilkins, at the side of the road. However, 
Jane and Jerry remember the scene differently. See, I think you were about here. And I think you were standing like that, and Joe and Jez was there with his pram pointing down that way. Because I think if you'd have been looking at me, because I, I would have said something, because I would have said about, because Kate had been moaning that you'd been gone a long time watching the football. I'm almost certain that when I came out, I came <laughs> over and he was here, and I was like that. That's my memory of it, is like Jez is 6'3 or something and looking up and then turning in when I finish. Mm. That was my memory of yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, well, they just... It's like, I mean, it's like I said, there are inconsistencies, you know, in every major investigation. OK, that's fine. Obviously, the most important thing is what you saw, Jane. It's not mm. where, where Jerry and Jez were actually stood, because they didn't obstruct your view of the, the man you saw. I was walking up here to do the check, and probably as I got to, it's hard to know exactly where, but probably about here, I, I saw the man walk across the road there, carrying the child. So yeah, I just got up and walked out of the tapas bar, past Jerry talking to Jez. That's when I saw somebody walk across the top of the road, carrying a child. And I think I did think, oh, well, there's obviously somebody taking their child home to bed. But it, it didn't look like a standard tourist. It's just ridiculous, isn't it? It just looks so much like somebody abducting a little girl when you look at it. And the... it just looks so obvious when you know, you know. But... Just look at it and you think, why the hell didn't you think there is somebody abducting a child, but it's not even a thought that somebody's going to go into an apartment and you know, take a child out. You know, you're probably the one person that could have actually stopped it and you think, oh, what if? It's, it's that what if, what if, what if? And you can take those what ifs to ad infinitum, really. At 9.30, half an hour after Jerry's check, it was Matthew Oldfield's turn to look in on all the children. He went into the McCann's apartment, but didn't go into the bedroom, and so didn't see if Madeline was missing. Pretty much from the approach down here, you can see straight into the room, so you can see the cots as you're walking in. So they never really felt like there was any real need to sort of go all the way into the room. Um, you could see both cots and you could see into them from there. Uh, I sort of bummed and hard about the angle and things. All I just knew was that I had an unimpeded view and it was just dead quiet and just... But why I didn't take those extra couple of steps in? Yeah, I mean, I was saying this earlier, but yeah. at no point other than that night did I go stick my head in. That was the only time, because the door was like that for me and I knew I'd left it. And it's more that, you know, I felt that like you'd, you'd done enough, you'd been, you'd seen, it was quiet. And part of the reason we ended up coming through the back was the noise coming through the front door. You just thought you don't want to disturb them. It's stupid now, but... It is possible that Jane Tanner is not the only person who saw Madeline being carried away by the abductor. Forty minutes after Jane's sighting, and half a mile away from the McCann's apartment, a family also saw a man carrying a young girl away from the town. Later, the witness thought that this might have been Jerry McCann, but this was investigated and ruled out by the Portuguese police. The man was seen here carrying a child just before 10 p.m. on the night Madeline was abducted. When the man saw the family, he appeared furtive and veered off to one side and, and carried on walking. But obviously, anyone carrying a child that night, it's, it's really important. We need to find out who this person was. 
was with my family. We'd been out for the night and we were walking up this street when I saw a man and he was carrying a child. I thought they were father and daughter, so I wasn't so suspicious. The girl was about four. She looked like my granddaughter. Blonde hair, pale white skin, typically British. The man didn't look like a tourist. I can't explain why. It was probably from his clothes. Someone knows the information, and someone knows who took Madeline, and someone knows where she is. Let's get moving. Let's get the phone ringing.